Hi everyone. Uh, so uh, today I'll be talking about um, data integration uh, in the view of Ballerina on how to do data integration using the Ballerina language. So uh, let's start. So uh, first start off by uh, saying, so what do you mean by data integration? So uh, basically it means when you have multiple data sources, data inputs from multiple places, you basically get all of them together and process them, store them and process them to make, do something useful. So, uh, so the first thing is basically you get things from heterogeneous data sources. Then, uh, then what you would do next is basically you had to put them uh, to a, like a common database. So we call it a data warehouse. So before putting it to a data warehouse, you had to do some processing. So you had to uh, do like a specific data quality based operation like data cleansing and so on. So uh, this is done with like an ETL job and so on. So um, after you get the things done into like put into a, a data warehouse, you will like do further data mining uh, and probably do some um, uh, OLAP based operations like uh, make data cubes and so on. So uh, you can do, do the things from the owners like that. And uh, also another part is like you can expose uh, this data as uh, data services. So like from the data warehouse itself or from like a operational database uh, to be used in other places of your uh, system. So, um, so those are the basic things that you would do when it comes under data integration. Uh, so uh, how does Ballerina fits in? So, uh, uh, so basically for data integration, so we have um, built-in type data types for like the, the popular data formats you would use day to day like uh, XML, JSON, data tables, and so on. So the things you would do with other li languages from uh, external libraries and so on, we have them built in. So it's easier to work with. Um, and also we have like uh, extensive uh, data connector support. So we have a few, uh, few um, SQL and OSQL data connectors. And of course you can write your own one also. And um, we also have uh, tra like uh, rich transaction support. So which is critical when you have want the data to be consistent and so on. And um, also, uh, of course, another strong point of Ballerina is their uh, visualization uh, capability. So we have data modeling support uh, within Ballerina itself. And uh, also we have like uh, scheduled data jobs uh, support like with the task features. And uh, also, Finally, we have for the data services uh, purposes, we have a rich set of uh, HTTP REST service exposing functionality as well. So um, all of these um, can be used to uh, cater these uh, data integration uh, requirements. So now we'll go um, in detail one by one. Uh, so um, I guess you would have uh, uh, gone through some of these from uh, Shuffle in stock also. So some of the value types we have in the system are like the basic types, int, float, boolean, string, and blob for binary data and so on. And uh, also uh, yeah, array types, uh, maps, uh, are the other basic ones. And as, of course you heard about the XML support as well. So we have our own uh, fully functional XML sequence API, which is easier to use. And uh, the JSON types, inbuilt, the JSON type we have uh, with uh, constraint JSON support for the schema enforcement. And uh, also our own uh, data table type. So which is basically to handle the uh, data connector result uh, types, result sets basically. Uh, so uh, uh, this uh, type basically handles that. And uh, also user defined types uh, by using uh, our struct type. So struct type is basically used for our in view of the data connectors for data binding. So uh, for each record in the data uh, data table, we basically return a struct. So the the uh, the results automatically bound to that struct and return to us. So it's easier to uh, work with. So we'll uh, look at some of the data connectors we have. So uh, which is basically is the entry point to get the data into the system. Uh, so the SQL connector, so that's a built-in connector we have uh, with the uh, with the runtime, so it's built in. Uh, so we support uh, most of the majority uh, databases, the, the the popular ones, like MySQL, MSQL, Oracle, and so on. And um, 
so the the default uh, sql related query support uh, for like we have different operations for the update selects uh, for the stored procedure calls and so on and um, of course we have other support for uh, batch operations as well so if you want to efficiently load the data into the system we can do batch operations um, and so on and also another thing we have especially is uh, udt support so user defined types uh, so we can uh, like very efficiently and uh, and in a, in a in a natural way we can map the udts that are in the databases uh, to the struct types we have so it's a seamless seamless mapping between the uh, the database type and the the program languages type so you don't have to do any additional programming to do the conversion between the database type and our inbuilt type so it automatically happens internally and um, of course, uh, we have um, XA uh, transaction support. So basically, for doing distributed transactions, so we support XA transactions. Uh, we basically have uh, um, the transaction manager built in to the Balkan runtime. So, um, so if you have the case of having multiple databases, uh, either the same database DBMS type or multiple uh, database servers, uh, you can do this uh, calls. Um, uh, in a single global transaction, uh, and also you can mix uh, also with uh, message uh, queues and topics also. So if any of these support the XA data source and the XA resources, uh, XA uh, related uh, properties, so you can try basically participate in this global transaction. So um, I'll show you a quick sample on the SQL connector. Um, so uh, as you have you may have seen earlier. Everything uh, in Ballerina is an endpoint. So if you have a connector, it's an endpoint. So uh, graphically also, it matches uh, the concept that's there. So from the client, you basically call to an endpoint and do some operation on it. So uh, basically, SQL Connect, you can just give the SQL the database type. Like For example, here, it's MySQL. Uh, give the servers, the connection properties, and so on, pooling properties. And uh, after you get the endpoint, basically, you can do the operation on it. So for example, doing a select, an update, and so on. So here you see like we have an update with generate keys and so on. So after that you get a generate key. And also, so uh, the select you can see after you do a select, uh, what you get is a data table. So data table is a fundamental building block we have when processing the results. Uh, so the data table either you can iterate through the data table, which is like a uh, streaming data source. Uh, or else you can do a direct conversion to other data types like JSON. So, uh, for example, here we have done a, like a data table conversion to uh, the JSON type. So you can see here. So you do that with the uh, like the conversion uh, function that we have with the diamond operator. And so here, when you do the conversion, either the if the conversion is successful, uh, this error variable list should be, will be null. So that's how we should check for error conditions in Ballerina. So uh, we basically have multiple returns here. So um, if you have a, a proper response, so the JSON, uh, the object, you can use it in any way. Like uh, if you are in a, a service, uh, you can send it out to the transport back again. So or else you can uh, like access specific fields in the JSON and so on. So um, that's basically it on how uh, the SQL uh, connector works. So. Um, let me go to some other connector as well. So we have a Cassandra connector as well. So um, basically, uh, this is not shipped by default uh, with uh, Ballerina runtime. So only the SQL connect is there. So but those are available in our uh, Ballerina Lang organization as a separate uh, repository. Uh, so basically, in the Cassandra connector also, we support uh, uh, full uh, uh, SQL-based data querying. Uh, so you can give any SQL query with parameters and get to work. And also, again, uh, this support streaming results with the data table integration. So any large uh, like uh, results that you would get with uh, Cassandra uh, table query, you can stream it out with the data table. So if you want to uh, check it quickly. So um, here you can see uh, we uh, generated this struct first. Uh, after the struct is defined, um, uh, when you 
basically uh, do some operations. You can see some create, insert operations here. When you do a select after after the when the data table is iterated here, uh, when you do a get next from the data table, it basically returns a struct. So the struct is uh, equivalent to the struct we have defined here. So how it works is in Ballerina. So we have uh, for the structs to become uh, compatible, we do struct equivalency. So basically, internally we create our own struct, so the internal. Uh, but when we basically do a cast using that data struct to what I created here, the outlaw struct, uh, it basically in the runtime it just checks for struct equivalency. If it's equivalent to the fields and so on, it matches, and you can get the field map. So in that way, you can easily get the data out in a natural way. So um, you don't always have to uh, go through this uh, cumbersome code of getting the specific field with the field name and so on, but you can nicely map it to a uh, struct you have. Um, so um, yeah, that's basically an example in CQL. Um, I'll now go to a, a different kind of a data connector. Uh, so the MongoDB connector we have, uh, again, that's an external one, which you can get from the repo. Uh, so MongoDB one also we have the basic uh, API support with insert, find, update, delete, and so on. Uh, all the operations are available. And also something special here is this is not bound to the data table we have, but uh, it basically returns a native JSON object because we have the built-in JSON data type. So MongoDB also works with uh, JSON documents. So we can directly get a JSON document out of the connector. We don't have to get a data connector and ask for a field which returns a, a JSON object. So it's basically a JSON uh, value we are uh, getting directly from the MongoDB connector. And also another thing is the JSON is also streaming compatible. So the JSON object you are getting, um, if you are uh, using it to send it out to the uh, transport, it will basically stream the value and uh, go back to the client. So if you are not accessing it from the, uh, the program itself, uh, if you're directly consuming through the wire, it'll stream. Um, so, a uh, small example on that also. So you can see uh, the create the MongoDB connector, uh, do some inserts, and so on. So you can see that even the queries we do with the JSON uh, data type, JSON values. So we're passing the queries, and um, basically you do the, uh, the, the, the find query get the value, and uh, you will be getting a, a JSON uh, object uh, when you do the operations. So um, later on, I'll show you an example on how we do a data service with this also, which uh, will uh, show you how to basically send it through the wire also. So uh, after that, let's uh, talk about the transaction support we have. So uh, we have both local and XA transaction support. Um, uh, so basically we do this, we are a declarative uh, approach for defining transactions. So in a Ballerina program, we can have like a, a transaction scope, a transaction block actually. So uh, which basically house all the uh, data operations that you do with the data connectors and uh, they will automatically be grouped into a single transaction, either a local transaction or, or a uh, exit transaction. So, how we know the mode, how we know whether you should execute a local transaction or not is inferred using the statements that are, that are inside the uh, scope. So that is basically if you uh, do operations on a uh, XA data source, if you if it's an SQL database or like a XA compatible uh, session in uh, in uh, in a message queue, uh, it will automatically switch to the uh, distributed transaction mode and it will execute it. Uh, distributed transaction when you are executing the uh, transaction block. So if you use a normal data source and so on, it'll fall back to using a normal local transaction because uh, uh, of course if you're using a single database, the most efficient way of doing the data operation would be a local transaction which, because it's much more uh, performant. Um, so, uh, so basically uh, in that way we currently support uh, SQL databases for uh, for the transaction and and message brokers. So uh, uh, using that, uh, you can mix and match SQL database and message brokers when you want to do like any uh, uh, distributed transactions. <clears throat> so uh, 
So uh, this basically show you uh, like how it works graphically and side by side the, the source view as well. Uh, so uh, so this is the transaction block I told you about. So in the transaction block, if we just drag and drop uh, data connect operators like a select, update, instance, and so on, so they will automatically become uh, the part of, uh, become uh, part of the same transaction. And uh, also, if uh, in need, you can also do a abort uh, in some transaction as well. So it's like uh, like a set rollback only sort of feature. So basically, after transaction, it will for sure fail if you do an abort. Uh, so uh, in the transaction, we have options like uh, if the transaction fails, um, we can say give a retry count. So uh, for uh, normal situations like let's say if a deadlock happens or something, you may want to retry the transaction. So uh, we uh, give the, uh, the the features for that also. Uh, like in a declarative way, you can say like this is a retry count. So if you get a retry count three or something, uh, it'll always go to the fail block and it'll again restart the transaction and do another try. So likewise, it'll do the retry until it succeeds or it'll fail. So if it fails, it goes to the border section, so which is there. Uh, you can see in the code also, or else uh, it will say committed if, if it uh, succeeds at any time. So, um, so basically that's how uh, transactions uh, work at the moment. So uh, we have plans to uh, extend this transaction functionality uh, more actually. So uh, currently it works in a single, basically a, a Baronia program where you have the resource managers there itself, the database, uh, message brokers and so on. So we are planning to make it more of a dis distributed uh, way in terms of Ballerina programs as well. If you have other additive operations and so on happening uh, across the network. So uh, we are planning on doing uh, our own uh, like transaction uh, uh, context propagation and so on, and the, the handling of the global transaction on ourselves also, and uh, having, um, having a feature for that. So basically, uh, you can have a, like a distributed transaction through the network and make it join the same global transaction. So um, uh, that's something that is to be uh, planned in the future. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, sorry. Uh, another thing is uh, graphical data modeling in Ballerina. So, um, uh, so it's natural for us. So we have like a. Uh, visualization mode in the uh, in the language itself. So like there's always a one-to-one -one mapping within the uh, source code view and the, uh, the, the visualization. So uh, using our composer, so we have uh, the transformer feature. So uh, using that, you can map uh, to uh, basic data structures. So if you want to do some uh, conversion, uh, you can use this transformer feature to do the conversion. So I have given you this example where, okay, in in one database I have this Acme employee and I want to convert to the DW user. So uh, basically, you can uh, very easily drag and uh, like draw lines to the other side and do the mapping. So we have um, a, a, a set of built-in functions to do the transformations, like so you can join, split, and so on. And also you can have your own functions as well. So uh, the nice thing is when you're doing the graphical modeling when you want to go into the, when you want to drill down and go into other advanced uh, logic in doing the transformation, you can do so by creating a function, write the code either graphically or using the uh, uh, code view, and basically come back and uh, drag and drop the function here. And uh, it'll give you a nice overview of what's happening in your transformation and other aspects. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, that's for uh, the, the data modeling. Um, and also we have uh, uh, scheduled data jobs support, so obviously, so um, which we need uh, when you want like to background uh, data uh, jobs that happens, uh, like for example, when you want to do an ETL job from a source to a target data warehouse in a specific time of the day. Uh, likewise, so for that you want to have uh, like scheduled task support. So uh, that is available in Ballerina as Ballerina tasks, so we have uh, uh, two modes of doing the tasks, uh, timers and appointments. So timers are basically, uh, it's like a initial delay plus interval scheduling, it's a fixed interval. And appointments are basically cron-based scheduling, so we can give a uh, 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 cron, 
um, statement and uh, schedule it uh, for your advanced uh, cases. <coughs> so uh, I'll give you a small example on how we used uh, the both modes. So uh, uh, one is timer, so you can see we can very easily do it. So using the time API, you can schedule timer and pass in a function pointer. So uh, uh, so basically create another function, pass the function name itself, then it accepts the function pointer, and uh, that gets scheduled. So it's you can see like, uh, for example, compared to you doing this in Java, it's very few lines of code that you need to do the same thing. Um, uh, after that, uh, so same way the appointments, uh, similar similar approach. So you basically give the uh, uh, give a string using the con syntax. And for example, I have a uh, example here which says run on every Sunday at midnight. Some maybe some uh, data job you want to run. So you can give the uh, cron expression, and uh, it'll schedule the uh, task in that way. And of course, we have the API to stop the task at any moment. Uh, if a certain condition uh, arises. So <clears throat> that's it for scheduling. And uh, then uh, then we'll uh, talk about how to do data services here. So um, if you have seen, uh, our, for example, W2 data services, uh, uh, we have like out of the box, like easy ways to expose data services for uh, like uh, relation databases, spreadsheets, and so on. So uh, the Ballerina data services, basically we are trying to uh, uh, get it uh, more further in terms of functionality, like um, to uh, make it more flexible, uh, to have more advanced features uh, in this case. So I'll uh, explain how we do data service in Ballerina now. So um, uh, we uh, have uh, the HTTP and WS, basically a WebSocket server connectors built in. And uh, with that, we can uh, like very easily create um, uh, REST APIs uh, in, in a rapid manner. And uh, of course, with these connectors, we have uh, the native data streaming cap uh, capabilities for XML, JSON, and so on, which uh, basically uh, uh, in um, uh, when you use it with the data connectors, we can have a uh, full experience. Uh, uh, and uh, also, uh, uh, we also support the batch data request uh, for high performance data loading. So, uh, so combining it again with the data connectors, we can create this data service because of this, uh, the combination of features. And, um, and the other thing is, so uh, with Ballerina, we get the, like, the uh, power of a general purpose language, but again, with the ease of using a visual programming approach. So because uh, you can start with the high level uh, constructs, you can uh, create the uh, transformations, you can create all the uh, other data connectors and so on, you can drag and drop and do all these things. And uh, when needed, when you want to drill down into a specific feature, like let's say if you want to do some advanced uh, uh, data filtering, uh, like uh, access control and so on, you can then go down into the code, do a Ballerina function and get it done and like plug it in very easily. So you are basically having best of both worlds there. So, uh, so I'll uh, quickly show you how, uh, how to do a data service here. Um, you can see, it, uh, see here visually, uh, basically what you do is you drag and drop HTTP service here, and uh, basically you fill in the, graphically you can graphically fill in the, uh, the connectors you are going to use and the operations you are doing. So here you can see that uh, I had a quick, uh, uh, MongoDB based data service. So uh, you basically define the HTTP, the context, the resources, and so on, and say this is the query you are going to use, get the JSON, and basically in the HTTP response, you just set the JSON payload. And uh, that's it. So then it'll automatically stream out the response when it's available from the connector. So uh, you can see, like, only with a, a little bit of code, you create a full data service. And you can have a like nice view of the overall uh, service on how it works, the mappings and so on can be visualized uh, uh, in an intuitive way. Um, so yeah, uh, so that's from the beginning to end on how to expose the uh, the, the data and the, uh, so as 
data services. Um, so um, yeah, so as a summary, uh, you can see uh, how basically Barrena provides an efficient and rich uh, set of connectors and the other features to do the uh, uh, like uh, uh, transformation data access manipulations and so on at the end. Finally, you do the data serving using the data services. So, um, so more information you can visit the Barana Lang website. Again, we have many uh, samples on how to use each of these. Um, so yeah, hope you will try it out. Thank you. Yes, questions. a pool of, uh, of, uh, of data of data connectors because each time uh, you receive a request you have to connect uh, again to the database and if you if I may third uh, where do I store certificate in case of HTTPS Thank okay you. Uh, yeah uh, so the first question on the, the sensitive data on like uh, the passwords and so on. So we are working on a, a configuration API at the moment. So uh, the plan, so we have not uh, fully finished that yet. So the plan is to have a configuration uh, file in the file system and to like do a key based lookup uh, in the configuration. So you can look up the key and have it there. And the plan is to encrypt the configuration file that's available there. So uh, we will encrypt it using the, uh, the, the, the private key we have there. Um, as uh, uh, for the second question on uh, connection pooling, yeah, so the, actually uh, the endpoint you can initialize. So actually my, in my example, I instantiate the endpoint at that place. Actually, uh, yeah, the, the correct way to do is you can define the endpoint there. Uh, so actually you can define the uh, uh, endpoint outside, so you can uh, basically instantiate it one time and reuse the same uh, endpoint. So in that way, you internally uh, like keep a, a connection pool, and it will be used over and over again. So the connection pool pooling is inherently built into the endpoints. Um, yeah, I guess those are the questions. Okay. Thank yeah. No problem. Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, throttling. Uh, no. Uh, so there, we don't have any special throttling capabilities with the connectors. So you have to externally. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so throttling, we haven't had that feature yet. So, so yeah. Uh, for these, it, uh, yeah, it has to be done in an outer layer at the moment. Yeah. So. Sorry, change the? Uh, yeah, uh, not at the moment. That has to be done uh, using the logic in the Barana program itself. So, uh, yeah, we have that feature in data services, like we can give a user role and do a filtering there and so on, uh, declarative. So we don't have uh, as that as a built-in feature that you have to do with some logic on your own so that you have to write a function and do the filtering and do it, yeah. Okay, I guess that's it, thank you.